Hey, what's going on? Uh, it's Mike from livingmyassoff.com. How you doing? So I haven't published a video in a long time, but what I did want to do uh, is bring my uh, SJ4000, the SJ cam, um, which some of you may know about. I'll put a link in the in the comments um, about what it was. But um, it is, let's see, it's Sunday, May 22nd, I think. Um, and I wanted to swing by my high school. So I cruised back to Boston. I grew up in a town called Hingham, just south of Boston. And um, it was amazing, and I'm honored to have grown up here. So I wanted to show a little bit of my high school. So my high school uh, is a beautiful building, uh, bigger now than when I went there. And um, it's, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think my class size. I think it was about 400 when I was there. And um, and uh, 300 or 400, something like that. And so what we would do uh, when I went there, it was 10, grade 10, 11, and 12. Um, and now I believe it's 9 through 12. So that's the football field over there. And it's got, uh, it's about the same as when I was there. I think maybe there's additional bleachers. But anyway, so that's where we graduated. Um, oh, you know what? Here's what I want to show. So what's interesting about this high school, uh, and actually many like it that where I'm from, is that it doesn't have like crazy uh, like chain link fences around everything. Like you come into the parking lot, and here's where you park You know, when you're a senior and you have your driver's license. Um, and then there's, you know, fields for sports and that sort of thing. But as you can see, it's like right by the road, there's no, there's no like fences. The whole, the whole thing's not fenced in. And I always dug that about it. Um, I, I, so the other reason I stopped by is, um, and let me get a shot of this for going and I can use this as a, um, oh, I love the zoom on the SJ4000 too. Can you get, can you imagine if on your, on your, uh, on your GoPro, you had zoom. It's pretty rad. And I know where I'm zooming because there's a display in the back. Anyway, so Hingham High School. But uh, when I was in high school, uh, and we all had our licenses, and as you know, in high school, college, that sort of thing, you experiment, right? So it's like, how much can I drink? How much drugs can I do? Blah, blah, blah. Gratefully, I didn't do any drugs in high school. Uh, so I made it through high school really well. Um, but what happened was there was a kid, uh, one of my buddies from high school, and sadly his older sister was killed in a drunk driving accident. And they, um, and it was, you know, and the, the, the guy driving was like a couple of years older than we were. Um, and sadly he was fine. He was behind the steering wheel. She, I guess, wasn't wearing her seatbelt. I can't remember. But at the end of the day, what happened was she cruised through the um, windshield. And I believe she died instantly, like hit a tree or whatever. The, the, the scenario's not relevant, the, it's the results, right? And so that was a big deal. And they had, you know, discussions around it. And it was, uh, I believe, because of that, um, a bunch of women got together, a bunch of mothers, and started what many of you know is MAD, or Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Now, when I, after that happened, what they did is they took the car and the damage that it received, and they put it in front of the high school. So everyone could see what potentially happens with drunk driving. Now, there's no label on this, and so I'm unclear whether this is the result of a, sadly, drunk driving accident. However, I can't imagine they just put a car here that's like in lousy shape um, in front of the high school. So either they're still doing this, and they do this every year, as a reminder of what happens when you drink and drive. Um, and that's what I'm gonna go with. And that's basically the reason why I stopped. I wanted to share this because, you know how like, there's a lot of things that you don't do anymore, a lot of things you don't say anymore because of political correctness, which I think is just nonsense. And if any of you who know me know that I don't have um, a lot of a filter on drunk, on, uh, so, and then I guess there was a sign here. So who knows what that was, but, Let's say for the sake of argument, this is what they do to basically remind kids to not drink and drive because this is the result. So while it's a little eerie um, and a little 
frightening and potentially gross. Um, I can't really see what's inside other than damaged stuff. Um, although I do see a, can you see the, um, the cup in there? Now who knows whether that's, you know, the result of, uh, can you see it? Let me see here. Uh, right there on the, on the seat. And who knows whether that's the result of, you know, what they mix their cocktail in. But it's a very sobering, if you will, uh, experience. Um, sorry, it's a very sobering display of what happens as the result of drunk driving. So anyway, so I just wanted to share that. I know it's a little weird and it's kind of a downer, but I can tell you that uh, certainly when I was in high school, what we did is we had a um, we had an assembly like right after, and they talked about you know what could potentially happen, the downsides, um, and why this like doesn't you know it's not just you getting drunk potentially getting sick, it's you hurting a ton of other people, and. You know, this, this certainly drives it home, I gotta tell you. I mean, because this is like the parking lot in front of where everybody enters the high school at the beginning of the day. Um, you basically just come down this street, and I came from down there, my house is like basically down that street and to the right about uh, two miles. Um, and then, you know, as you're pulling into the parking lot, you see this, because that's the, you, uh, you enter right here. So you pretty much, you pretty much have to go by this thing in the morning and see it. So anyway, um, I just wanted to share this as uh, an example of what certainly they do here to ideally proactively present, prevent the next guy from doing this. Now, here's the thing. It's 2016. I graduated from high school in 1986. Uh, so that was uh, 30 years ago. And if to 30 years ago they're still doing this, and as far as I know, Mothers Against Drunk Driving is still absolutely in existence, then um, people are still drinking, people are still driving, and people are still getting hurt, and people are still dying. So, you know, I have no real judgment on that. I mean, if many of you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, uh, and I can tell you that at least once, <laughs> Uh, I drove while intoxicated and gratefully didn't hurt myself, didn't hurt anybody else physically, uh, didn't damage my car or whatever. I got into like a little fender bender when I was a kid, when I was in high school actually, and ran my car up on like a snow bank or something and then had to uh, explain to my dad the next day why there was damage to the front of the car and snow all over it. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. It's kind of a it's kind of a sobering experience, huh? Anyway, um, and along those lines, you know, to kind of leave on a positive note, I can tell you right now that after being sober uh, this month, I will be 24 years sober at 48 years old. Uh, so pretty good, right? I I'm happy about it. I'm proud of myself. I'm grateful to Buddha and the universe for keeping me clean and sober. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad that I had enough motivation to do it, i.e. not wanting to die or ruin myself any longer after the age of, at the age of 24. Um, since then, I have an attitude of gratitude that is massive. And, uh, and that's really what I want to share. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm doing, I'm doing this blog, vlog, and I'm doing this blog at livemyassoff.com to really give you sort of an idea of what it means to truly enjoy life. Um, and you know, one of the phrases I have is live the dream, because if you're not, you're doing it wrong. And I truly believe that. Uh, many people, and me included years ago, uh, used to believe that the way that you live the dream is you consume as much cocaine and alcohol as you possibly can afford or get your hands on, and then you're going to have a really good time. And uh, I tell you what, 24 years later, or basically 24 days later after I first got sober, I realized that is absolutely not a requirement. And in fact, the ingestion of any of those things, for me, uh, makes my life even worse, like 1,000 times worse, to the point where really the only result is uh, a damaged car, damaged lives, and uh, damaged people. So I gratefully don't do that anymore. Um, and because of that, I'm living the dream. I am literally living the dream. I wake up in the morning and I think to myself, I made it through yesterday, I made it through the night, I haven't had the desire, thank God, um, to drink or use drugs, and I haven't drank or used drugs. Um, because even when I didn't want to, I would. 
and I don't anymore. So uh, I got to tell you, it's a blessed life. Now, it's been 24 years, right? And so um, arguably, I find things today that, that have nothing to do with drugs and alcohol um, that make me feel grateful. Um, and I'm also really grateful that I don't need to see a guy with no legs to be grateful for my own legs. Um, that used to be the reason I would see scenarios or other people that didn't have and then be grateful that I had, which is a good start. But today I just wake up and I'm just so grateful for everything I have. Um, relationships with my parents, honesty within my relationships, a great job, great employees, great employer. Um, and, you know, I'm healthy. I'm 48 years old and I'm able to like stand on my own two feet and run and go places and all that. So, I mean, honestly, the title of this video, I've just decided, is going to be Attitude of Gratitude. Uh, and I hope you have one. I hope you have a gargantuan attitude of gratitude. And obviously, I hope you're living the dream. Because as we'll always say, if you're not living the dream, you're doing it wrong. So check out the other videos here. Uh, I would really, you know, it's funny, I've, I've got a body, bunch of buddies that do YouTube videos. And I'm going to say a couple of things that they say at the end of their videos because I would really appreciate it. I would appreciate it if you sub subscribe. If you hit the thumbs up button, that would be awesome. If you hit the thumbs down button, I would actually really appreciate it if you sent me an email and let me know why. Whether it's the quality or my voice or my sunglasses or whatever, what do you think could be better? Now keep in mind, if you think it could be better, I hope it's something that you can justify. Um, because just because you're like, I hate glasses that reflect and remind me of when I used to ski in the 1980s. It's not going to be good enough. Um, but so anyway, so I hope you like it. Please share, please subscribe, uh, and tell your friends. And uh, honestly, live the dream, because if you're not, you're doing it wrong. Ciao.